Hi, I'm Greg. This is Take It EV, a podcast about electric cars and sustainable lifestyle. Welcome to episode 39. In this episode, we have a conversation with Ole from Recharge. We're going to be talking about the new business and how it may be useful to you on your uh, EV motoring adventures. So stick around and listen to the uh, interview. But before we start, I would like to thank my patrons. Um, go check things down below if you want to become one. Um, there's also a Twitter account that you can follow, at Take It EV, for all the discussion and conversation where you can suggest and interact things, and also comment on this episode. And um, stick around because the uh, Ole has actually uh, graciously agreed to have a little discount code for uh, for listeners and viewers of this podcast. So stick around and enjoy the conversation. So let's start with the uh, uh, very topical question, which is, how's the weather? In so you're you're in Berlin, right? I am in Berlin, and the weather is actually pretty good. I literally stepped outside just there for the first time five minutes ago today because we are currently um, yeah in an accelerator uh, pitching pitching days and um, quite busy with the team um but it's yeah it's like 28 degrees it's super warm it's warmer than my flat i was like <laughs> went outside it was really warm um no yeah generally quite a nice summer uh, in germany here okay. actually is quite that, that, quite a hot a summer normal, is that a normal weather in the summer or not i would say mid 20s is normal late 20s is a bit warmer but we also have had like yeah 30 35 degrees this summer already for like three 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 four days in a row which is for germany quite 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 hot okay yeah it, it is quite hot in here i think it's 32 degrees currently yeah i yeah. heard there is a, you have a having a bit of a heat wave yeah it's in a, UK. We, we may we are melting for the next i don't know week or so so you know yeah uh, yeah that's coming whole... to us a bit later i think but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm currently you know i have a fun under the desk kind of just to keep me chilled because okay, when i'm recording i have to kind of close all the doors and windows obviously and uh <laughs> the room becomes very warm yeah i i, I, I <laughs> oh, feel that oh. but no no weather is weather is uh, nice very uh, enjoyable summer so far not so much for the plants probably but for for humans it's good as long as you have a lake or something yeah, as long as it doesn't doesn't stay like that for too long, you know. Yeah, true. true. Uh, I enjoy the few days of rain and and below twenties as well. <laughs> so, um, can can you just introduce yourself briefly? Because you know we've been talking uh, about the weather, but you know, can you tell people who you are and well, well, um, yeah, and then we can get into the conversation that you know we're here to to have. Okay, of course. Uh, yeah, so I'm Ole. Um, I am the CMO and one of the co-founders at Recharge. Um, I have a uh, yeah, marketing background myself, um, corporate venture building, um, done that in the past. And now I've joined Recharge. Um, two, two guys um, have, been, have been working on it a bit longer than myself. I've joined them um, yeah, in the recent months as the third one in the co-founding team. And yeah, we are currently um, building the EV um, travel app um, that, yeah, I'm going to probably dive into a bit more uh, in a second, what sure. we're doing there. Yeah. Um, the, the question that I have to ask, because people are going to ask, what is your connection to electric cars? Or are you just like, or are you just in, like, yeah, what is your connection to electric cars? Do you drive one yourself? Are you just interested or, or you're in the field because it's the next big thing? Like, what is the... What is the, of, the angle? Of course, yeah. So, so I'm I'm a huge mobility and car enthusiast um, since I can remember basically, and um, I'm not driving a car. I don't own a car myself because I live in Berlin and it doesn't really make any sense to have a car here in Berlin. But I, I usually drive electric cars um, with the car sharing um, car sharing providers here in Berlin all the time and um yeah my, my parents both drive electric cars um so so i'm yeah used to the to the troubles and also to the to the good good sides of um electric vehicles cool uh, what, what cars do you have do they have sorry your parents um so so my mom drives a um smart eq um smart eq and my dad has a um eqc a mercedes okay, so eqc yeah. So, they're, so they're both Mercedes people, basically. Basically, yeah, exactly. So, um, 
that that's how I grew up as well. And uh, yeah, we have um, solar panels on the roof. They're charging um, in this weather, especially charging for free, basically. And yeah, I think that's a great, quite a good setup. It doesn't work for everyone, but um, yeah, I, I in my flat here in Berlin, I could not charge my car on solar <laughs> solar energy, unfortunately. So yeah. Yeah, I can understand. Like, yeah, I grew up in a in a in a biggish town in Krakow in Poland, and I didn't get the driver's license till I was about twenty seven because there was no point having a a, a car. You know, yeah. public transportation is so good that it's just no, it was no point. Um, so I can I can I can understand that when you live in a in something like Berlin, there's just no point uh, owning a car these days. Of course, yeah. For me, it was the other way around. I grew up in a village outside, uh, yeah, semi big town. Um, and always needed a car, always had a car. And then, yeah, when I moved to Berlin, it was the other way around. Like, didn't didn't make any sense to have a car anymore. So I got rid of my old car. Fair enough, fair enough. So, um, yeah, so it, we're going to talk about the recharge, uh, which is the business you're involved in. And the, uh, um, but, you know, I asked, I, I asked, I asked people on Twitter, because I've got a quite a big following on Twitter and, you know, if if nobody's if if you're listening to this or you're watching this and you're not following me on Twitter, it's at Take It EV, just like the name of the podcast. Um, and uh, I, I asked people, would you pick a hotel over another just because it has a destination charger? Which obviously was like a cheeky way of saying, I need questions to ask this gentleman in front of me. Uh, and uh, you know, if any, and and I was I was, I was quite I was I thought oh, there's going to be five people, maybe it's going to respond. You know, people are going to be pretty negative. I was quite surprised at the um I've got I don't know how many responses but I've got almost 300 likes and m loads of re retweets and quote retweets and people are generally quite you know quite zoned in when it comes to EVs and and driving and finding chargers because you you have to right uh, like the destination charger is obviously one of the the main ways you're going to be able to drive long distances uh, uh cross country exactly. I mean I'm I'm doing I'm doing your marketing job at the moment but the, I'm just I'm just set, setting it up uh but the, uh, um, you know, if you go to somewhere like like Booking dot com or or other sort of websites like that, they do obviously nowadays they have to have a filter where you can actually find the charger. But um, just reading the responses that I have, loads of people are uh, had a very bad uh, uh, experiences when it comes to finding a charger, or or you know finding a ch hotel with a charger, but the charger would be often iced or it will be an old charger that nobody at the reception has any idea. You know what it is. It will be, it'll be cobwebs over it, over it, or, or like in my case, they, um, they had it in front of the hotel, but they told me they're going to charge me thirty pounds to use it every time I use it, and I was like, thirty? That just no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, to recharge, like, uh, give us a, a like, a, you know, brief statement of what you guys do and how you're trying to, uh, how you're trying to make things better for the, for the for people, and what is the sort of future hold for you guys of course okay yeah thank you for setting it up um yeah obviously as you said charging is kind of still the main concern um for people when they drive or travel long distances with their evs and um there's not enough chargers in in general i think yeah we are lagging somewhat 40 percent behind plan in the whole of europe uh, regarding charging um charging point numbers there's reliability issues. Um, that's I think the general problem and pain points that we are that we are dealing with here. And yeah, I think then for for the long distance travel with EVs, yeah, people need to use three, four, five different apps and platforms to yeah plan their route, to find charging along the way, to also find yeah ideally a destination with charging. Um, and then yeah, so we thought our object, or we made it our objective at recharge to simplify all that and bring it all into one place. So route planning, payment for public charging, and also um, booking of hotels with charging. And we started with the la latter um, and started out as a hotel booking platform for hotels that have um, charging, um, yeah, charging points either on site or um, public charging nearby. We have around 10,000 hotels with their um, yeah, own uh, infrastructure on site. And then another hundred thousand hotels um, with yeah nearby public charging um, possibilities, and that's mainly focused around Northern America and Europe, with the UK actually being yeah kind of our strongest market so far. I would say we launched at the end of last year, um, and 
yeah, are now um, uh, yeah having having nice growth in user numbers um, every every month, and um, yeah, that's what we are currently doing. Um, again, we are we are planning to um, build in the other um, existing features that 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 are already there in different apps on the market, and building that into one um, yeah single interface into one app um, in the future. And currently, yeah, working on the hotel hotel side of things. So, so yeah. If I if I go to the website currently, it's it's basically just like most of the booking websites, you know, because there's only so many ways you can slice that pie, right? You could, um, the um, you you basically uh, enter a destination or where you where you're going or where you want to stay, and then find and it shows you on a map or on a list list of the uh, the hotels how much they're going to cost and and of of course they're going to include either the uh, the destination charger at the hotel or in the area a public charger. But what is the difference between, say, going just by just throwing it out there because they're quite big, the you know, like Booking dot com and checking the filter? What is the difference between you guys and somewhere like that, some other alternatives? Of course, that's I think probably the most common question that we get from anyone and that we pitch the idea to. So obviously, Booking dot com probably the biggest player, and um, yeah, what they do, they tell you that hotel has charging point that's it and what we obviously want to do and i think what yeah most ev drivers also need and want is more detailed so how many chargers are there what kind of chargers and um, then ideally in the future as well pricing etc cetera, etc cetera. so the yeah way way more in depth um in the details um about the charging infrastructure that you can find on site okay in comparison okay. to booking.com yeah yeah, so you're saying things like pricing. Obviously, that's going to come because that's going to change, right? But did you verify the charges in any way, or is it just is that information um, provided by the hotel themselves? No, we we combine um, yeah available charging um, information with the hotel data. So the hotel um, technically is not um, involved in telling us what they have or what they don't have. Um, we we source that data um, from a third party and then bring it together with the hotel data that any other um, yeah hotel booking site would also usually have pictures amenities etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and the uh, what is the sort of like the, you mentioned the the end goal is basically to have uh, a, a route planning facility so you can say I'm coming from you know say in my case from Tunbridge in the UK to Berlin. And it's going to take me, I don't know, I think it's like 12 hours to drive that distance. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to stop somewhere overnight, just, you know, halfway somewhere in Belgium, say, or, or Denmark, not Denmark. Uh, what will be halfway? Uh, let's just Netherlands say or, Netherlands. or... Yeah, somewhere nice, yeah. obviously. I don't want to stay in, in Amsterdam. I want to say, stay somewhere where, you know, the birds are chirping in the morning and the view is nice, right? Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I want to wake up to a fully, fully, fully uh, charged car. Um so that's the uh, how how soon before we get that feature? Do you have any roadmap? Um, roughly, we are currently um, yeah planning with a rough um, roadmap of twelve months until we have it all um, completely integrated and out into the into the platform and also um, to make it an app because currently we are uh, yeah responsive website so um, yeah not an app that you have to install on your phone. And um, the, the goal is to make it um, an all-in-one app, um, and we are looking at roughly a 12-month timeline there. Okay. okay. And uh, um, yeah, and a few features we can um, integrate gradually uh, in the yeah meantime. Um, but but we want to be finished um, within yeah under a year. Okay. And do I have to sign up? Do I have to uh, get loads of emails from you guys to to use it, or can I just? Uh... How no. does it work? You, so currently you don't have to sign up at all. You can just check out, you can find your hotel, um, find the room you, that you want and check out as a guest um, and, and never be bothered by us again. Um, yeah, that's. but you can also make an account um, if you wish uh, or sign up to our newsletter to, to just stay up to date if you yeah don't want to miss out on travel tips uh, and also obviously changes to the platform, etc. Okay, and do you do you allow users to to review the charges? So say I you know I booked the hotel through you, 
but the charger was actually iced and you know i was disappointed uh, is there any way to kind of uh, get some feedback or get put some pressure on the hotel basically to improve things in the future uh, so yeah currently we are what we what we are currently started um just a few weeks ago is uh, collecting feedback on Trustpilot, but that's more a generic feedback for us as a platform. And then we obviously see if there is if there were problems with the chargers, we can then feed that back manually to the hotel for the time being. Um, yeah, further down the line and with an increased user numbers, I think it made would make sense to also have the users rate each hotel individually. Right now, that's um, yeah probably um, with the user numbers in the tens of thousands um, that we have, um, yeah, not not really making too much sense, um, and we rather have them feedback to us in yeah a more generic way, or if it was a specific problem, we can then feed that feed that back to the hotel. But yeah, it has to be said that you know you're a fairly uh, young platform, right? It's yes, very, you yes. Know, you haven't been around that long, like. If you compare it to websites like Booking.com or Hotels.com or whatever else people use, uh, there's, dozens, there's maybe not dozens, but there's few, quite few of them. They've been around for like ten years, probably some of them. So you know, yes. they had time to 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 develop all the features. Uh, um, do, do you do you know, like roughly in terms of the uh, the the priorities? I think something like just personally, like something like having ability to have a, to put a feedback uh, to you know uh, in. I think that people would find that very very appealing and obviously route planning is also quite useful because you want to know roughly where you can stop and, and plan it that way if there's a very, you know because uh, um, if, I, if i use something like a better route planner which is something that people often use to to plan long long uh distance routes yeah. there is no way for me i you know if i plan if i put if i use something like a better route planner i have to go in and find the hotels in the area that i i'm going to charge or you know second or third charge in a row so that i i kind of uh stagger the um uh, uh, the, the the traveling but but also that doesn't guarantee me that there's availability at that time in that area you know um and uh and having the two things connected uh, makes perfect sense and i'm very surprised nobody's done that properly yet so you know i i um i i i hope that uh you know you get you get the uh the features done quickly because i think the, the, it's, it's one of those things like you think about it this should have been done a, you know a year ago and and everyone's kind of very impatient impatiently waiting for somebody to to bring that feature and when i talked to you about because we met at the uh, the move conference um yeah. earlier this year i thought you know you guys seem like like you're, you 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 know what you're, what you're talking about and and the, uh, the 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 website kind of looks looks like it functions a lot of those there's obviously loads of people trying to do the same thing but the uh they they all have just nice presentations and maybe like a rudimentary website that where nothing works. So you know I like the fact that you guys are uh, have already a feature that people can actually use. Um, so yes, uh, yeah. Sorry. And maybe one well, now just just one word on, um, that's exactly why we started also with the hotel part because that part I mean there's route planners there's probably too many charging apps and charging service providers, which is probably also part of the problem. That we want to solve further down the line, um, but yeah, we started with the hotel booking part of the of the whole journey, so to say, because it yeah purely didn't exist in the market, and um, yeah, nobody was offering a service like this. So yeah, that's where we where we started, and then we want to use that obviously as the base to then evolve into the yeah holistic holistic EV travel platform that I described earlier. Okay. Um... In in terms of the, uh, the you mentioned that UK is like your your biggest market. Actually, that's quite surprising. I would I would think that US would be much bigger. Or your uh, how big is your US or, uh, sort of database, or is it or is it just are you, that's are still in the process of building it up? Exactly. So obviously, the US being a, a huge huge nation, a huge country, um, our density of hotels is way better in the UK and Europe, for example. Um, so. So in yeah overall um it our our offering is just better um here in Europe and then yeah the UK just seems to be um yeah the very interested in in traveling with an EV uh, long distances yeah our marketing campaigns work best best um over over um in the UK okay um is there anything else worth mentioning 
as we're talking about this? You know, um, anything I didn't kind of uh, hit on or? Um... Um, I mean, I guess one one thing I saw also on your um, on your Twitter discussion was um, about yeah pricing and also the the option to go fast charger instead and and just take a normal hotel etc and i think that's currently i mean we are seeing the switch in in the prices currently over the last week weeks and months um fast yeah i don't know roaming providers are are changing their prices um it's not all all free and cheap anymore um as it was maybe months a few months ago and um we think charging at the destination with an ac charger is overall for everyone involved can be way more um, efficient and also cost efficient um and and still provide you with a full battery to go yeah the next day um to go on the road again and um therefore i think yeah the the way of the of how we would offer it charging at the destination mainly um yeah slow and steady overnight instead of um quick and expensive at the service station um is is probably a nice alternative if you know it fits the if if, if it fits the itinerary of the yeah. of the yeah. ev driver yeah I, th I think like from speaking from experience sometimes you are you're not sure about the destination charger because you leave it there and you know you plug yourself in and you don't know if somebody unplugs you in the middle of the night or if it's safe to leave the car you know quite often the uh i mean I've been driving EVs for seven years, so you know, I I uh, back in a day when electric cars weren't like a normal thing on the road like they are kind of now nowadays. Um, you had to call up the hotel and ask them if they if they have a availability for the charger. So I had I had one hotel who they actually gave me access to one of the rooms um, on the ground floor just outside of the car park, so I can plug myself in using the three pin socket in the room. Through, through, um, the through the window? Through the window, Yeah, very nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Another, ho another hotel told me to park outside of the kitchen window and they just put, plugged it in, in the kitchen and left the charging uh, like that overnight using the, uh, the, the you know, the 3 kilowatts or 2.5 kilowatts, whatever, the, the slow charger, yeah. um, the backup charger. Um, but that, that was when I had a Nissan Leaf, so it didn't have a big enough battery to, to like, it would charge fine overnight. Um but these days, obviously, things have improved. Like, you know, I expect hotels to have charges in a prominent space and more than one. Um, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. But, but yeah, like, like you say, I, yeah, where I was going with this is that the, uh, I think the reason why people prefer to use uh, uh, rapid chargers or, or, or fast chargers is because they, they have that control. They know that they're going to be charged for the next day. Um, so, you know, uh, having that... Having that ability, do you have that currently on the website that you can, where you can just say, okay, I want to have, you know, uh, um, the charger available and know that the, there's an AC charger at, at the hotel when I book my stay? Is that is that something when I when I go through the booking process? Is that something that the hotel knows that yes, I want to use the charger? So yeah, how it works? You can filter um, f by um, either hotel with their own charging on site or um, hotels with nearby uh, public inf uh, charging infrastructure. And then when once you're on the hotel detail page, you see exactly what type of char charger the hotel has. And then um, once you booked it, we will let the hotel know um, there's someone coming on this date um, who who yeah wants to charge their car, who wants to use your um, charger. So they um, then, yeah, try their best, obviously, to keep it uh, keep it free. Um, make sure there's no no um, other cars blocking it. Um, yeah, and then it's obviously, yeah, that that's how we how we um, ensure at least nowadays that that will be available. But we also yeah working with charge point operators um, to allow for reservation and also um, eventually pre prepayment of charging at the at the destination um which is also a feature that will come further down the line um hopefully not too not too <laughs> late um uh, yeah hopefully before before we have um the the whole app ready um in 12 months um okay. that could okay. be a feature that we could integrate um a bit earlier than that okay um cuz i you know i I know that you guys are in a sort of early stages, so obviously, you know, we, we can try, uh, we can try kind of um, 
influence your uh, your decisions as much as we can but you know you, i'm sure you have other sort of stakeholders who dictate what the roadmap is but they, yeah but uh, please uh, input is always uh, welcome <laughs> please okay, so, please uh, fire so we, we, are you guys are on twitter or uh, uh... we are we are on twitter um recharge underscore ev um okay. recharge always within with a three instead yeah. of the first e yeah so it's yeah. r three charge uh, basically um yeah, we are we are on Twitter, we are on LinkedIn, um, good old Instagram, and even TikTok. We started a few weeks ago, um, so yeah, we are we are available wherever you want to catch us. So obviously, like if any, I'm 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 <laughs> I'm sure nobody's gonna have any questions, but if they do, you know, I'm just joking, obviously. <laughs> uh, if if they do have questions or suggestions, I you guys are open for uh, uh, for you know feedback. I'm sure. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And do you you did send me a, a code that I can sneak in and uh, let people use? Uh, I know you guys are in the sort of early stages, so it's hard to like say like I want these features, I want all these features, and I want them now. <laughs> How much? You know. <laughs> if, if, no. If, if I had the money to to invest in companies, I would probably pick somebody like yourselves to to invest in it because I think we need we need a service like this. Um, so, actually, on that subject. Uh, you you mentioned that you guys are in the uh, accelerator currently, but you're probably open to if somebody was to like say, take my money and and you know invest it. Uh, I'm sure you're open to that as well. Yeah, exactly. So we are currently um, we're not yet in an accelerator. We are just um, this week we are we are in a yeah kind of selection days for an accelerator in uh, in Amsterdam actually, and um, yeah having to do a lot of pitches and uh, etc. But yeah, we're also raising raising our first round currently. Um, so if there's any investors, um, business angels, um, VCs out there who might be interested, please yeah contact us. Um, contact at recharge um, dot com. Again, recharge with a three R three charge. Um, yeah, please please hit us up, or I, I'm sure you can also make the connection if there would be anyone. Um, yeah, I'll put all the details in the, uh, in the description. Yeah, below. please. Um, Please do that. Um, and yeah, you mentioned the code. Uh, so if anyone of your uh, listeners would yeah would like to save a bit on on the next hotel stay, um, it's just take it ten. So take it like is in your podcast name, and then ten, the number ten, and that would give you up to ten percent um, yeah off of a yeah stay that you book with recharge. That's not too bad, is it? Like ten percent off is. You know, Britain is one of those nations we, we like a bargain. We like to save money. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> use we, this. Uh, we... Use this as an easy trick. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but the uh, but a lot of people want to travel across across Europe, and obviously it makes it easier if you're traveling in an unknown place. You know, somewhere like Germany, where you, do, you might not speak the language, although Ge Germans are generally good at speaking English. Um, so you know, so it might not be very hard, but it's easier to just book things on, on online before you travel. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, we do see that actually a lot um, now with the summer holidays approaching. We see people from yeah Norway booking their way through Europe basically, um, and also also people from from the UK booking booking their places as you said in the Netherlands and in France probably going down to the south of France or something in their EV. So we do see kind of the, the footprints um, people for, for people traveling um, for their summer summer holidays in our booking system. So that's quite quite fun to, to see. And sometimes <laughs> you actually can can like kind of um, yeah see say what they actually what their road trip actually looks like. Um, so that's quite fun. That's that's very good. Uh, like I said, I well that just shows you that the uh, the service is is very much needed. Uh, so you know I I I hope I, I hope you guys do well and I hope the uh, all the pitches go well and um, the people throw money away because you know we we need services like yourselves to to kind of be out there and and be available. Um, any any last words before we uh, finish? Yeah, I mean the the point that you raised with the feedback, we are really like more than happy to to get feedback on board. I mean it's the best thing you can get direct customer feedback. Um, yeah. It's not going to be possible for us probably to to incorporate everything at at, at once uh, or, or or relatively quickly, but um, yeah, I think that's the most valuable thing you can get um, critical 
customer feedback, direct customer feedback. So yeah, we are very open. Um, just yeah, fired us. We try to to um, listen to all of you and yeah, use the code. Uh, take it ten that you uh, mentioned and yeah, thank you for for having us or having me um, on your on your podcast. On my, my my pleasure and uh, yeah um yeah having like I said having a service like that is very important and also the fact that you guys are a, a fairly small team at least for now is also you know this is like the uh, this is the stage at which I think people should be uh, encouraged to to talk to you um, and influence your decisions in the future because uh, once you grow beyond certain level it's much harder to change things uh, true that's very true. Anyway, I, I yeah, all the best in the uh, and you know I hope I hope you'll see many people booking through uh, through us basically or, or using the code, uh, and uh, I'll speak to you later. Thank you, Greg. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Have a good yeah. one.